For those who didn't see the previous video, here's a recap. <laughs> now that you're all caught up, this time we'll be abusing the Iron Beavers. Their motto? Work hard, work hard. We'll be making the city-state of Amazon, led by our fearless leader, Jeff Bevos. We've got big plans for the city, and a morally questionable plan to do it. One of the biggest differences when playing this faction is that these kings don't breed normally. They chuck their kids into barrels of protein powder and energy drinks. Those who survive get to join the Amazon family workforce. Successful employees may be awarded a single bunk, but to foster team spirit, housing is shared among 10 to 20 other beavers in a cozy barrack. Aside from a few building changes, Iron Beaver gameplay is largely the same as before. Grow stuff, destroy nature, and build the damn wall. Seriously, do that ASAP. Even if work hours are almost as long as an Amazon warehouse, without water, your employees will protest by dying at inconvenient times. So block off the river to save some water in a drought. With all that handled, time for the strength of the Iron Beavers. Overpopulation is the name of the game here. With so many beavers wandering around, somebody is going to get the job done. Don't worry if unemployment rates are high. New positions are always opening up. Ensuring your beavers are fed is not really important. Those berries could be used on a younger beaver with a slightly longer life expectancy. Just keep their waifu cups filled with energy drinks and they'll stay productive. Homes are also optional. It's more important to spend that wood on things like research centers. Yes, the number of beavers without homes is growing, but consider this instead. They're not just homeless beavers. They're homeless scientists. And truly, we have the best and brightest science team. All good things must come to an end, so we will be pausing baby production. Just let them ferment for a bit. Now, there is a fantastic iron deposit over here. Unfortunately, it's too far away, so I need to make a new district. And since it's in a dried up piece of garbage land, we'll need more resources to support this new expansion. So pretend this is Cookie Clicker and just sit there for a while. After the wait, we'll have enough resources to get started. Even got enough research for dynamite, but more on that later. Districts are a perfect perfect example of why bureaucracy is great, because just bringing iron from here back to base would be stupid. We need iron to get dropped off here, so it can get dropped off here, and then we can bring it back to base. We're doing well on food currently. Too well, actually. So let's delete some to make room for dynamite production. We've also got a growing need for energy, and water wheels aren't cutting it. The power engines are a bit too expensive at the moment, but all these unemployed beavers are giving me a better idea. Ta-da! We've transformed these drains on society into valuable employees. No need to thank me, citizens. Also, coincidentally, as we finished that, we were able to build an engine, which invalidated this whole exercise. But it makes Jeff Bevos laugh to see the peasants hard at work, so no need to tell them they're useless. Now that I understand how district work, I can block off the end of the river. I thought it would be funny to use levees and stop the water flow completely, but that nearly flooded the entire map, so I had to abandon the idea. From here we kept stocking up on TNT to expand the river. Droughts were no longer an issue thanks to our goddamn wall. I did attempt to create infinite power using dumps, thereby creating an infinite water flow to turn the water wheels. Unfortunately, the math didn't work out, and we ended up just wasting lots of water. But I guess that's what happens when your science team is comprised entirely of sleep-deprived homeless beavers. Well, setting that aside, the TNT supply is good enough to start going boom, and we get a pretty satisfying view of life returning to the land, so we can exploit it even harder. After building out some more Amazon warehouses, with working conditions that I'm very proud of, and tremendous wages paid in berries, it's time for the grand tour. But before that, just ignore all the warnings on the screen. Science demands sacrifice. And in this case, breeding pods at the bottom of a lake. Ideally, if they survive, we'd have a genetically superior beaver. The next step of evolution. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, we haven't seen that happen. Yet. That aside, we've got a great city, with a population count about as stable as Dogecoin prices. There may not be human rights here, but let me remind you, these are beavers, so it doesn't count. And let the gods punish me if I have sinned. Oh. Beavers can swim, right? It doesn't seem like they mind too much. And hey, look, this district has a second floor that they can all huddle together on. Don't worry, small beaver. I've got good news for you. Things may be bad here, but you'll be happy to know that Amazon Prime members are perfectly fine. Jeff Bevos and his family members are safe and having a great time on the newly installed carousel. Just look at this happy child's face. Well, the game is inverted now, and droughts are the only time resources can be harvested safely. Overall, I'd say this was a successful venture. Hope you enjoyed these crimes against beaver kind. If you did, please do like this video. It really helps the channel. And consider checking out one of these videos handpicked by myself and our robot overlords.